What's happening guys, it's Max with Biz and Media. I'm at the NBAA base of 2023. I'm with Steve Bassano, President and CEO of the Jet Business. Are you fighting McGregor? Yeah. You know, people tell me I'm the Steve. I'm, I'm the Steve, Steve of the United States. I don't have a, a private jet in my office though. Behind us is a Praetor 500. Yeah, this kitchen is larger than most kitchens in New York City apartments. 40 years ago, I used to work for this guy. In this video, we tour this $40 million Boeing business jet. Get a glimpse into the future of corporate aviation, and you get to see exactly how we buy and sell private jets. We then compared this $24 million Praetor 600 to a Praetor 500. Should we go take a look inside, Steve? Sure, let's go. Let's go. So as you walk in immediately into the airplane, you can see the galley. This airplane is basically equipped so that you'd be able to put enough meals to operate this airplane. In, in most of the airplanes, people don't really get big, exhaustive kind of cooking meals. They're usually packaged and they're ready to be served in, in small little uh, containers. And then they dish them out here and they bring them to the, uh, the passengers. But it's a very, very um, small galley for most kitchens, but it's a very big galley for an airplane of this size. Up here you have the screen which actually operates most of the lighting and the entertainment system for the cabin. As you come in the airplane, obviously when you first immediately turn to the left, the cockpit. It's very clean, very open. It has the side stick fly-by-wire. It makes the cockpit very clean because you get you remove the standard yoke stick, which is in most of the airplanes of, of early vintages. It has three big screens on the uh, across the panel with the one center one, so you're able to really, it's like video games now. It's so simple to actually operate these airplanes. There's not very few switches and buttons. Mostly you're on the screen where it's a touch because now everybody in the world is used to touching screens and making everything happen. So you can see it's a very, very clean cockpit. When you take away that stick, it really opens up the whole cockpit to a much more open, friendly, user-friendly kind of an atmosphere. As we enter into the airplane, most of these airplanes are the same. They all have these four big club seats here. And these are pretty standard on most airplanes. There are some now that they have a couch here, they have a conference table here. But really when you walk in, you want that clarity, that, that straight, clean line to walk through to the back of the airplane. These seats are uh, reclinable. They can pull out, they can tilt. And also the two seats just behind that where the VIP usually sits in this forward-facing seat here on the right. These reverse down, reverse, and then the backs go all the way down so that you can put a single uh, full sleeping bed right on each side. Come a little bit further back. Uh, this uh, sort of area, if you don't have a full load of passengers, this becomes a sort of a hangout area where the people sit and chat and talk, plan their meetings that they're going to. This chair also can reverse and become a, a lie down bed. And this, this divan or couch, as we know it, is really much more comfortable than the two chairs put together. But sometimes what they do is they put a very thin film, uh, like a jet bed, which is a, like a foam padding on, on these chairs to make it a nice and flat uh, lay down area. You don't have to do that on the divan. Coming back further, this is the lav, and uh, it's a fully stand-up capable lav. The door closes here, so you get full privacy. It's got the sink, all the cleaning supplies in here, a mirror, and the uh, toilet. This seat actually can be used as a certified seat for takeoff and landing if you wanted to put a, a tenth person in the airplane. And I've seen a lot of people in here. It's it's quiet, it's private, but a lot of people don't want to sit on the toilet taking off landing, but sometimes a crew member will sit here uh, when they need the extra space to, to serve. Coming back a little further, this is a, a luggage compartment that's accessible just from the cabin. It's separate from the one that's accessible outside. So you have two different places for uh, luggage. So Steve, this is an excellent super mid-size aircraft. What is the range on the Praetor 600? So this, this aircraft has about 4,000 nautical mile range which is really unusual because most of these aircraft have about 3,000, 3,200. So it gives you the capability of flying New York to London, London to Dubai. Really has um, a large cabin range with a super mid-size operating cost. And you can fit comfortably, I assume, up to how many people? You can get, oh, you can get up to nine people in here, very comfortably. You can put the couch in there, you, you can you know, get another seat in there if you use the, uh, the lap for a belted uh, seat, which some people do use if you have the extra need. But the airplane basically is, uh, in a super mid-size, this really is an ideal airplane because the technology in the cockpit with the uh, um, side stick fly-by-wire and the cabin altitude is really unique. At 38,000 feet, the airplane only has a 3,800 foot cabin altitude, which is uh, very, very low for this kind of an airplane. Why is that important? Well, because you, your body feels much better. It's closer to sea level. Anything above 3,000 feet starts giving your body a um, 
a fake feeling of, of what the altitude is. So even though you're at 38,000 feet, the cabin altitude inside the airplane is your body's feeling like it's at 3,800 feet. Your body's not getting tired. It's sort of, that gives you one of the big reasons why you get jet lag. You have some time change things, but sometimes if you're going, let's say from North America to South America, there's no time change, but you still get jet lag. And the reason is, is because when you mix altitude with, let's say, alcohol, it's a terrible, terrible combustion uh, mixture. This airplane actually minimizes that because the cabin altitude is so low. So what kind of an individual would buy this specific type of aircraft? I mean, listen, m most of the companies that need this airplane is you, you want to be able to hold nine people and you can actually you know, hold more if it depends on the seating arrangement. But really, if you're going cross country, you, you need a 3,000 mile airplane. This is a 4,000 mile airplane. So if somebody really wants to have the capability, if necessary, to go to London, let's say, from the U.S., this, this can do it. Uh, obviously, it's from you know, most places in the U.S. and on the western side, you can go to Hawaii. Uh, if you want to go down to Central South America, it, it has those capabilities. Where most of the super mid-sized airplanes have a 3,000 mile range, which gives you east coast, west coast, but sometimes in a really strong wind in the wintertime, you get a headwind and sometimes you can't make it, let's say from the northwest of the U.S. to the southeast of the U.S. Absolutely. So it gives you that extra comfort uh, and, and fudge factor with the extra range. So for example, why would a principal go for this kind of aircraft instead Instead of the sort of three zone cabin lo long haul aircraft? Well, if you don't need to, to have the extra seats, meaning a, you know 12 or 14 seats, you know, this airplane is much more efficient. But the typical kind of uh, person or company that would buy this airplane is somebody who needs transcontinental range and, and able to carry you know eight or nine people. And sometimes if you can take these chairs and turn them around, they get fully lie down so you can get four lie down beds between the eight seats. It gives you a much more flexibility. Uh, so a company that is making three or four stops in a day can easily do that if they have to make, you know, go see factories or on a road show for an investment bank or something like that. It, it's just a really um, an airplane that has a lot more flexibility than the typical airplane of this size. And I assume the runway performance on this is really good as well. Compared to the uh, competitors, they're all pretty much about plus or minus 10%, but the aircraft has obviously one more row than the airplane that's one below this, which is the Praetor 500. But that airplane, since it's a little shorter, it's lighter, which gives you obviously shorter runway uh, requirements. Fantastic. And you can land in London City with this, I assume. Yes, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Behind this is a Praetor 500. It is one of the most popular mid-sized aircraft. Steve, should we go take a look inside? Sure, let's go. So this airplane basically has one less row of seats. It has about 800 miles less range, but the airplane is uh, as efficient, has the uh, side stick fly-by-wire. It's got the good cabin altitude pressure. It's really the most modern airplane of the Embraer fleet. Matter of fact, the airplane flew here to the show on sustainable aviation fuel. The capabilities of these airplanes now, and they are more being promoted to be able to you know, save the energies and uh, really try to make the airplane much more environmentally friendly. This is quite a popular aircraft for charter, as we know. I think uh, Flexjet use them quite frequently for their fleets. Uh, you've flown on quite a few of them. Uh, you know, they can easily hold, you know, six, seven, eight people, but uh, obviously you can see the seating of six people, super comfortable, the couch up front for another two people. But the cabin altitude is something that's really unique. The quietness of the airplane, the speed, uh, it really, just for this cabin class airplane, it really is uh, a lot of the most modern technology that's offered in its cabin class against the competitors. Absolutely, no, because this being one of the super mid aircraft, it really gives you the feeling of a large cabin long range aircraft without really having the operational characteristics of one. Also for runway performance, actually if there's any European uses this aircraft in Saint-Tropez, they have a Lamol airport. This is the largest airplane that's allowed to land at Lamol airport. Fantastic. So it has some really great, uh, you know, short field capabilities. And what is the, what, what is the range of the Praetor 500? This airplane just a little over 3,000 miles. And which is in, in this, you know, mid size, super mid size, that's usually in the two to three thousand mile range. So it's definitely on the upper end of that market. And if I were to buy one today, how much would that uh, set me back? Yeah, probably in the high teens. High teens? Yeah. Fantastic. And I think you're probably, you know, a year, year and a half uh, if you order one today, I think that they'll, they'll have one ready. Behind us is the future of corporate aviation. Let's go inside and take a look. This being the really widest cabin of any corporate jet, isn't it? The 6X is the widest and the tallest, and this is even bigger than the 6X. This is uh, the standard bedroom with a king-size bed, but we have a larger one, which is a suite, where you can have a desk cabinet with a seat here, which is a longer, a longer bedroom. And here you have the standard 
bathroom, which is uh, without the shower. But inside we have the model, the, the, the modular, which is the biggest bathroom with a shower. What's good about having a bedroom in the back of an airplane, you get the full width of the airplane for the bathroom and the bedroom. One of the possibilities in this compartment it is, is a home theater with a big screen. We can have even a bigger screen and you can see it with the family and enjoy the, the movie. So you have, as you can feel, the width, which is almost three meters width. You can walk inside the cabin, not just in, in a tube, but you can move and turn around the furnitures. So you have almost uh, more than two meters headroom. Now you see the windows, which are bigger than on any other Falcon, even bigger than on the 6X, and there is plenty of windows. The, the brightness in this cabin is amazing. It so makes the airplane have, look even bigger. Yes, it, it makes a plane, a plane which is not a plane anymore. It, it's a flying apartment, so you can enjoy moving around. You not just have to walk in the aisle, you know. What's the anticipated noise levels inside the airplane? Uh, you know, the Falcon ITEX is uh, certainly the, the, best, the best airplane for that comfort, because it's uh, the, the lowest noise level and it will be even better. So It'll be better than the 6X, uh, the 8X. The 8X, wow, right. That would be amazing to be right. that low. Uh, uh, it's a lot of, uh, of space inside, wow. so you, you have not this feeling to be in a plane and just have to sit. You can really enjoy the volume. This is also something we enjoy, to have a table where you can be four or five or six, it depends if you have a credenza. The seats could be uh, swiveling and tracking, of course, but you see the space allow to, to access to the table and to leave the table without having to, to disturb anybody. Will, this, uh, will there be options to make a table where it goes down to make this another bed? Sure, sure, like on the Falcon 8X, right. 6X. You have a single bed here, a single bed there. You can put two people here, that's four. You're going to be able to You have another divan here, which eventually could be another uh, couch or pull-out bed is another two. And then you have the master bedroom suite, which is another two bedroom. Really, the capabilities airplane, the range on this airplane is 7,500 nautical miles. Really, it's right at the top of the range of all of the uh, ultra long range cabin aircraft. That's the top, top, top of the range of most of these planes. 7,500 nautical miles could get you anywhere. It can get you from London to Singapore, get you from the US to Australia. It really is a, the optimum range to get anywhere in the world. And if somebody was put an order in today, they're going to get, a, get an airplane in 26 or 27? Uh, it's already sold out. So it's already now, sold now out. So we, now 2028. Now we, we offer in 2000 uh, Q4 27. So they're going quick. I think everybody better hurry up and uh, put their money in. Do you ha are we allowed to say what the price is of the aircraft? Price is uh, 84 million in June 23. So we, we put an escalation formula in uh -huh. addition to this base price 23. For a well-equipped airplane, of course, it's not a green airplane. Well, just to say that this galley is not a galley anymore. It's a, an American kitchen, you know, a, a lunch bar where you can stand up uh, like with Steve and we can be two or three having a drink and enjoying with the four windows. You see the, the four big windows how bright in this galley area is not dedicated for the flight attendant anymore. It's an additional compartment to enjoy a drink during a long flight. Yeah, this kitchen is larger than most kitchens in New York City apartments. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very light and bright. It's really, it is like a, a kitchenette in a, in a house. So it's a really unique kind of space. And of course, here you see crew rest, which is an additional bed for, for guests, but can be used as a crew rest for, uh, for, for pilots or crew members. We are very modern cockpit, you know, with a symmetry for the two pilots with the uh, Big FA, so you have uh, the cursor control device with a trackball here. And you have the smart throttle here, so this is a revolution. One throttle. So this is the first time this is incorporated into a cockpit, right? Yes. One, one control for both engines. Yes. It's rather unique. So it basically adjusts inside uh, through the uh, hydraulic system to make sure both are synchronized to be equally distributed with one control. Exactly. So traditionally, there's always one control for each engine and you have to adjust them when you're going uh, full uh, throttle or if you bring them back uh, to a reverse. This is a rather unique, it's never been done before. So it's one control, it, it controls the both engine settings so that they're perfectly synchronized and one will never be out of sync with the other. Thank you for showing Thank me around. Thank you, show. Steve. Great, always a pleasure <laughs> to see you. Next, we toured a BBJ, also known as a Boeing business jet. 
Mr. Varsano, welcome aboard. Thank We're going to show much. you this airplane. It's a custom build from a very discriminating buyer. Endeavored to build it exactly the way he wanted, so he bought the completion center. It's a good way to do it. He did it. So what we have here is an open floor plan. This is your galley. You can live in this cabin with your family. You can have meals. You can have appetizers. You can look through the full cabin and see you can have a dining area, a lounge area, wide screen TVs. You can close the area so you can close off the galley and you can bring your family in and you can have the greatest ability to entertain. The, the layout here is uh, pretty unique because uh, it's a combination of business and social. Sometimes if you have too big of a table, it, you know, it becomes useless because it becomes uh, too set in its way. Here when it's broken up into two sections, you know, it's a little bit more flexible and, and having the open air here just makes it a bigger, wider sort of an optimal viewing of the whole cabin. So you see you have another monitor here. You can display business meetings. You could display notes. You can take, have all your people sit here and in, entertain them or have a meeting. Mid-cabin lavatory. This hallway is designed so you can get maximum use of a second bedroom or a second conference room. So this could make into a table, so you could have a private dining area. You have a big screen TV so you can entertain, or you make it into a bedroom. This could make into another bed, so you could have the ability to have a, a quiet meeting, or you could have another bedroom for guests. And so this, come, this comes up and a cushion comes here, so it becomes a, a our, pretty our, big size bed. It articulates into a table, and then you can make it into a bed massive bed and you have the ability to have reading lights over the bed so you can read in bed or watch your own private movies. Yeah, one of the best things about these things, when you put the bedroom in the back and the bathroom in the back, you get the full width. It's, it's pretty quiet back here also, and when you close off the door, it becomes your own private suites. And with the bathroom and the shower you have in the back? We have bathroom and shower. So you have a full shower, toilet, sink, and there's two exit doors on the back of the airplane that are closed off, and then this is extra insulation, so you have a very quiet and heated floor, so you come out of your shower, it's nice and warm, nice and quiet. But I mean, it's a great airplane. I mean, it's designed well, it's very functional, and then you get all the amenities that you want in a private airplane. The number of tanks, fuel tanks in this airplane, you get 5,800 miles, which is about a 12 hour, 11 hour, 12 hour range. 12 hours. 12 hours range. So easily you can go from Los Angeles to, you know, to Europe. It's got, you know, pretty much to Asia. Uh, really, this airplane is one of those airplanes when you're inside a Boeing, you really never look outside the window when you're traveling. It's like being in your own apartment. So it's a, a rather unique flight experience versus a typical corporate jet. We had a look at the Embraer Praetors and the new Falcon and Boeing business jet out on the static. It was then time to head back to the convention center where we had some more meetings with potential clients and industry people. Just arrived at the convention center, trying to find uh, one of the brokers that represents uh, one of the sellers that we're trying to buy an airplane from, because they just got confirmation that we just got a deposit at the escrow agent. So we're trying to see if we can move this deal along. That's my first priority. And then from there, I have a couple other meetings and uh, see how we progress a few deals. What's happening, guys? It's Max with Biz and Media. I'm at the NBAA base in 2023. I'm with Steve Bassano, President and CEO of the Jet Business. Tell them why you're the best, Steve. I didn't say I'm the best, you just said I'm the best. I don't, tell them why you're the best. Listen, we, we really take care of our customers, that's all. We try, probably do it better than anybody else. I'm sure everybody else says that. That's why we, our company, is the best. My guy, Steve Asano, you heard it from the man himself. Excuse me, Steve. Hey. My name is Tom Lollio. How you doing, Jet man? <laughs> nice to Dude, meet you. Dude, I'm meeting my hero right now, man. <laughs> like, the jet business, everybody tells me, man, you're just like Steve, you're just like Steve, you're just like Steve. I'm like, come on. Why aren't those people calling Steve? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, like, what's going on? I mean, I'm, like, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do stuff on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, all over the place. And working? It is. I don't have a, a private jet in my office, though. <laughs> Nobody does. Yeah. No, you're doing amazing nice. things. Well, I can't thank you enough. I hope, I hope we can do a deal together. Michael. Michael, nice to meet you. Are you out here shopping around or are you just, uh, no, I'm just, just posing? Icon. I'm with Icon, yeah, just kind of posing. Someday, the plan is to have one, you know. So, Steve so. is a big time champion. Uh, Battle tour, UFC. Champion of what? Uh, mixed MMA. martial arts. Like oh, really? Cage fighting. Yeah. So, 
You do not want to get in a fight with this guy. So fighting, fighting Conor McGregor. Yeah, I need you for protection. Yeah. You uh, fighting McGregor? Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Probably really happening. Yeah. And then when you win, you come and see Steve. Yeah. yeah. So I win, then we get a jet. Is that yeah. what we're doing? Okay. There's only, it's only one place to come, man. UFC, yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Pleasure, huh? Great to meet you. I ended today by catching up with a few old friends and had a few more meetings. Good to see you, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Good to see you, man. Doing well. How are you doing? All right. How long ago was it at CMI? Early eight, uh, 40 years ago. 40 oh, years ago. I used to work for this guy. And that's the end of the video. If you like that and want to see us tour more crazy private jets, subscribe to our channel and leave us a like. See you soon. Mm -hmm.